Hey, Sandals Church men. Man, what a, an incredible message this past weekend with John Bevere as he really tackled an issue that's probably near and dear to a lot of us. I mean, just judging by my small group last night, we had a lot to share about being offended and offering forgiveness and who in our life that did God sort of bring up in our mind that we needed to uh, restore a relationship with or forgive in our heart. And uh, I, I think that for a lot of us as men, uh, we do have a lot of offenses. And I think many of us hide from those and we, um, we get hurt, but we hide behind our strong opinions or we avoid people or situations and we don't really deal with it and we kind of carry offenses. And man, I've talked to a lot of men who have offenses from childhood, they have offenses from high school, uh, they have them with their spouse or with their kids, uh, with people from their workplace, and f typically fail to, to really address it, really to work through it. And the Bible has a lot to say about forgiveness, and it, it's pretty clear. I mean, John Bevere hit it pretty hard. Like, if we don't forgive, then we don't get forgiveness. And that's what Matthew 5 says, that we have to be forgivers if we're going to receive God's forgiveness. Otherwise, we prove that we don't get it. And so I think this is a really important topic to dive deep into, uh, to really address with your small group, uh, whether you're in a men's group or you're with other men in a, a community group of some kind. And I think, you know, because we don't want to be vulnerable um, and the, these hurts make us feel vulnerable, we don't want to address it. So um, we've got to get this right, men, or else we find ourselves alone. And most men over time end up being alone. Their circle gets smaller, and either through offense or lack of convenience or moving or whatever, we all of a sudden have very few people in our life that we can trust or confide in. And that's why we have groups. That's why we have community, because we need other people to live out the Christian faith to become who God has called us to be. And so I, I was just thinking of a few times, man, I've even been offended at Sandals, like not not that... Um, they did anything wrong necessarily, but I wanted to be the group's pastor many years ago. And the truth was I wasn't ready for it, but I thought I was, and I didn't get the job. And I was offended. I actually got a call that week for an opportunity up in Fresno to, to have a job and to move away. And my propensity was to like, hey, let's go. Like, I'm offended. I'm hurt. Um, and I wanted to go seek somewhere where I'm really appreciated. And, uh, man, God just slammed me through my wife who was like, what's wrong with you? We're not moving away. The Sandals is the best church we've ever been a part of. And I had to work through that and realize that it wasn't a real offense for me. It was just, I was hurt because I didn't get what I wanted. Um, so there's other things where my wife offends me because she's honest with me. And there's a lot of times truth in what she shares. And because it makes me feel insecure, it produces conflict. And I have to learn to receive that and not take offense. Um, man, when we launched the Woodcrest campus, uh, it felt like the people at the main campus, which we now call Hunter Park, weren't interested in helping us. And so a lot of people got offended. We made assumptions about whether or not they're interested. And one of the ways that helped bridge that gap was actually having conversations with people and finding out where they're coming from and, and, and hear their heart. And so in order to work through this issue of offense and forgiveness, there has to be conversation. And that's really vulnerable and it's challenging because we don't like to enter into that space. And um, I, I think forgiveness should actually be just a regular process. If we're um, sharing with people um, how we're feeling um, and kind of going uh, both directions in giving and receiving forgiveness, then we can become healthier people. You know, I've had uh, several people over the years because I'm in a position of leadership come to me and say, hey, I've been harboring bitterness against you for whatever it was. And a lot of times there's nothing I did on purpose, but they felt hurt by it. And uh, so they came and shared that with me. And one of the things that was hard is I felt that they're wrong in those moments, but I knew it was really important to receive their attempt to bridge the gap well when they said hey i need your forgiveness for holding bitterness i f forgave them right away and i didn't justify what i did i just said i'm so sorry i had never intended to hurt you i'm sorry that it did hurt you and i love you care about you and it didn't have to become a big thing and i can still be in relationship with those people to this day so i, I think it's important to search our hearts to really deal with this issue uh, john gave us a lot of stuff to think about 
and the questions this week, I'm telling you guys, are phenomenal. And I want to really encourage you to press into those. If you're in a group, man, talk with the men of your group about these questions. We redesigned them specifically for you as men. If not, talk to somebody you know. Just ask those questions and say, hey, uh, would you ask, you know, just answer some questions with me and talk through this? Um, because it's so important that we go together um, or approach these things together in love because. God wants us to be united. He wants us to be the body of Christ, not a disjointed body, but one is that is together. And as men, we talk about all the time, we're stronger when we're together. We need each other. Uh, if we're going to finish this race well, if we're going to do the things God's called us to do, if we're going to transform our families, transform our lives, and transform our community, we have to work together. We've got to be able to receive uh, the difficult conversations and also initiate them and respond well when people uh, deal with these things. So I wanna encourage you to pray about if there's anybody you need to go to, anybody you need to release, because that's what forgiveness is about, is about releasing someone else from your judgment and allowing God to be their judge instead of you. And so to release them, uh, because it makes us healthier, it makes us stronger, and it helps us to be the kind of people that God wants us to be. So whether that's your marriage or a friendship or somebody at work, or family members, man. A lot of people have hurt from mom or dad or sibling that may or may not ever apologize, right? They may carry these things to their grave. We have to learn to release them. Uh, maybe we're not in the same kind of relationship that we want, but we need to release them so that we can grow and mature and so that we can develop better relationships in the future. So lots to talk about, guys. I wanna encourage you to dig into those questions. Keep pressing on. I know this season feels long, it feels tiring, but I wanna encourage you, stay connected, stay focused, keep working through these things. Reach out if you need help, don't isolate. Man, when we're isolated, the enemy can just pick us off one by one. Uh, we've gotta stay focused on God because God is still doing a work, right? Things are crazy all around us. Everything feels uncertain, but God is not uncertain. He is certain. He has plans for us. His word never fails. So I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. Love you guys. Praying for you. God bless you.